got black, I got white, what you want? Hop outside a ghost and hop up in a fan, uh I know I'm about to blow, whoa, whoa, I ain't done They try to take my flow, I take the ass for ransom I know that I'm gone, they see me blowing up Now they say they want some I got two twin glocks, to me to a dancer I see two twin ops, leave them on a the band, none I got two thick thoughts, wanna link the game I got red, I got blue, what you want? The Chanel of Balenciaga, Louis and Vuitton She know I got the funny Prado when I hit Milan I need a me a diet rider, I need me the one I started from the bottom, you can see the way I stung I want all the diamonds I want It's been two weeks since we've had an event I'm in lockdown again. There's a sixth lockdown in my state. I need some entertainment. We gotta look back at last week's mistakes though. You know, I bet on Carolina and Penne to go the distance, which fucking everyone thought I was gonna go the distance. And now to know when Penne pulls off a submission for the first time in fucking years. I gotta stop betting on these short things if it's in the women's MMA. And it sounds sexist, but it's not, okay? They just haven't developed as much as the men's. You know, they haven't been around as long. In the UFC, women's MMA has only been around since 2013. Way behind the eight ball. So you just never know what's going to happen with these girls. Unless it's high level, like Wiley Zhang, fucking Rose, um, Amanda Nunes, you can't be confident in your bets. That's something I should have known a long time ago. But I just looked at that matchup. I was like, Carolina with the pillow punches and Penne. She ain't got shit as well. So it's going to go the distance. And you just never know, man. I deserve that loss straight up. Recovered a bit with Aldo and Munoz. But that's a classic example of don't bet on women's MMA unless it's fucking high level. You know, Aldo and Munoz, they're high level. They've been around for a long time. It's fucking consistent that it would have went the distance and it did. So they helped me out, definitely. But it's still an L for the week. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, bummed out. You're losing so much money. It's like, well, I'm up 50-something grand instead of 60-something, so I think I'm good, bro. Let's break down this card right quick. Kicking off the main card, we got Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Royval. Good flyweight matchup, high-level matchup. Um, you got Royval, who's coming for loss. Well, it was an injury, but he was losing that fight, to be fair. More than likely, it would have been a unanimous decision loss had he not been injured. But you never know with Royval, who's extremely crafty. Good submission game, great off his back, not afraid at all on his back. If anything, he pulls guard half the time. Dangerous on the feet, unpredictable as hell. As soon as you hurt him, you just don't know what's going to happen. You saw Kai Kara fans rock him with that overhand right. Fell right into a spitting elbow. Roy Val has a very unique style. You know, he reminds me of Tony Ferguson. Like a less refined, smaller version of Tony Ferguson. And he's already had a good amount of experience for his age. High pressure fighter. He's a guy who walks forward and continues with the pace. He doesn't really settle. He doesn't really wait. He keeps moving forward and he forces the action. He just flows with the chaos. So with Roy Val, you just got to stay disciplined. You got to be careful. You got to watch out for things he's going to pull out of the bag. Pantoja, on the other hand, strong, hard-nosed. I wouldn't call him a veteran yet. You know, he's fought a lot of good guys. Um, Asuka Askarov, Brandon Moreno, Dustin Ortiz, you know, Matt Schnell. He's done well. Very physically strong guy. He's always on the front foot. It's very, very rare to see him on the back foot. Pantoja, for the most part, he's the stronger gentleman in the ring. You know, he's the guy who walks forward. He can get away with a lot of stuff. You know, the way he strikes is very basic, rudimentary, but he's got a lot of power and strength. So he can get away with striking that way because his punches are more effective than most other guys in that division. Roy Val, he's got to pull things out of the bag. He's got to throw a lot of strange techniques, but I see Pantoja walking him down and I see Pantoja dominating the ring. I just think with the smaller cage, it favors Pantoja. It's a less room for him to catch, you know, a fleet footed guy like Roy Val who needs movement. Walk guys into his traps. Pantoja's grappling sensational. His strong point, you know, he's got excellent submission. One of the more physically stronger guys in the division. Good control and good ground and power. Can I see Roy Val landing a spinning elbow? Absolutely, 100%. But Pantoja's got a great chin and he can always lean on his grappling as well. I see Roy Val getting really creative. I can see him giving him problems, but I also see Pantoja landing the more effective shots to the body, to the head, closing the distance, being more effective in the clinch, the stronger man, Muay Thai plum, landing knees, taking him down. I see the scrambles being really interesting and very high level, but Pantoja has the strength and the technique. So I think he's going to be one of those guys who can control Roy Val. He's one of those guys who can avoid the submissions. You know, he hasn't been finished. TKO all submission, man. He's a tough, tough gun. I think Pantoja is just going to pass the test. I think he's going to beat Roy Val by unanimous decision. Just big brother him on the feet, on the ground. And uh, look impressive yet again. We've got Vince Pichel versus Austin Hubbard. Good 50-50 matchup, man. Both of these guys are very evenly matched. What jumps out to me is Austin Hubbard because he's a guy who's had a very tough time in the UFC, man. They've given him tough fights against... Of Madsen against Selecki against Ramos like he's fought a lot of high level guys early on in his career and one thing you can say without a doubt is he has a lot of heart he might not be the most sealed guy but he's definitely not one dimensional you know he's got a decently well rounded gang you know he's got grappling he's got stand up he's a little panicked and he's a little new to the game you can see that there's some green aspects to him in that you know when guys pressure him he doesn't know necessarily what to do you saw Madsen basically just beat him with pure grappling Madsen had no stand up 
You know, Matt Matson's a straight up Olympic wrestler who just walked him down, took the punches, got the body lock and lateral through him. He did better than we expected, man. He proved that he has a lot of heart, a lot of skill, and he can turn it up when he needs to. Vince Pichel, on the other hand, this guy's been around the division for a while. You know, he's kind of an older name, not a big name, but he's fought decent guys. You know, he's done well. You know, his win over Jim Miller was nice. A real step forward in his fight IQ, in my opinion. I like the way he incorporated the takedowns later on in the fight when he knew that it was neck and neck. And he has a good understanding of how to impress the judges, but thing with Vince is like his stand-up isn't great I'm not a fan of it you know he's pretty average at best I think Austin's kicks are going to be an issue for Pichel and if Pichel wants to wrestle Austin's got the grappling to compete man you might give Pichel the advantage of top control but I believe Austin man his stand-up game's good his get-up game's great man you saw M Manson took him down like eight times he got up every single time against an Olympia so I don't see Pichel holding him down with ease man I think it's going to cost a lot of energy and I favor Austin's stand-up as well. I believe Hubbard's just a little more creative, a little more diverse, has a lot more weapons, whereas Pichel's just a straight-up boxer at times. I got Austin Hubbard mixing it up and landing more on the feet um, and defending enough takedowns. You know, Hubbard's just a better striker. He's just a better striker. His grappling's very underrated. So I got Austin Hubbard winning by unanimous decision. Moving on, we got Leo Mano Martinez versus Trevin Jones. Fun fight, man. I didn't know who the, either of these guys were until I tape studied them. And I'm keen on Mano Martinez, man. This guy has great stand-up, ridiculous powerful bantamweight. He doesn't look powerful. Nothing about his frame it implies that he's a powerful guy but he fucking sleeps guys man eight wins eight knockouts this guy is definitely the type of fighter that the ufc is looking for and he's got submissions you know he definitely has submissions you know he tried to pull a, an omu plata and then he ended up getting triangled in the dana white contender series but he definitely has a, a ground game to boot but his stand-up is so dominant that throws to keep it on the feet and why wouldn't you you've got the power and everyone knows going into it that you're dangerous and it shells guys up and it forces guys to grapple now, Trevin Jones, on the other hand, he's not much of a grappler. He's more of a striker as well. Jones is just a wild card, man. He's athletic, he's strong, fast, but he doesn't have much skill at all. You know, on the feet, output's very low. His grappling's not great, small for the division. He just has a lot of power. Because he's so green and he's not very conventional, it's hard to tell what he's going to do. And that's why he can get upset wins here and there. And that's why this is a live fight, man. Mano Martinez, I think his stand-up is just a lot better. Not only just the power, but the discipline. His defense, the way his fundamentals are, the way he checks his hooks. I like his control, and I believe he will be the aggressor in this fight. I think Trevin, he's gonna realize, like, fuck, this guy's a little too sharp on the feet, and he might desperately go for a takedown and fail. Not a grappler, man. And Trevin, you know, he could knock out Martinez. He's got that power, but Martinez is just so disciplined on the feet, man. I, I see him landing something big, fighting behind his jab, and then just eventually hurting Trevin or something. I got Martinez winning by TK in the second round. Moving on, we got Parker Porter versus Chase Sherman. The Chase Sherman is the more educated, higher level boxer, light on his feet good boxing good combinations definitely has a speed advantage in the heavyweight division you know you see him tune up Villanueva. he's got great elbows i'm um, good combination punching but he's got no head movement and that's really what fucked him against Olovsky, man Olovsky just used his fence and his output Olovsky stiff as fuck and he beat Chess sherman man because sherman just got no head movement walks forward no head movement now parker porter he's a way slower less athletic boxer but he's very strong man he's short sturdy for the division big as fuck though his legs are like fire hydrants if he pushes you against the cage in the clinch he's gonna wear you out very heavy guy man chase is not a guy who fights very long you know he fights in the pocket a lot and i think that's going to be a, a problem for him because porter is a guy who can close the distance and wear you out and i'd favor him in the grappling department as well chase has to be very very careful here because if porter manages to take him down it's gonna be hard to get up man he's a heavy motherfucker he's got a good round and pound chase he just needs to keep it at boxing distance kicking distance favorably as well but porter's got good leg kicks you can't underestimate him here but again pure boxing Chase is definitely the better fighter. He strings together combinations a lot better. He's a lot cleaner with his technique. But that's only one aspect of the game. I believe Parker Porter has what it takes to cover the distance. I believe he has what it takes to get Chase Sherman hesitating in the fight. Just being the bulldog that he is. Walking forward, heavy leg kicks. Cover the distance, clinch him up. You know, dirty boxing, head control, fuck up his posture. Just be an absolute nuisance. And I think Parker can do that. Despite the fact that he's so much slower than Chase. I just think he has more weapons and more avenues to win this fight. And if Chase can't keep it at boxing distance or kicking distance for the whole three round duration, he's gonna have problems. So I got Parker Porter winning by a decision. Boring fight, terrible fight, but Porter by decision here. Moving on to the co main event, I got Clay Guido versus Mark O'Madson. Fun fight, an appropriate step up for O'Madson. Being an Olympian wrestler in Greco, very much a hyped fighter, and he's got the skills to back it up. No one said he was a great striker. Barely has any striking, he's very stiff, but his wrestling is second to none. Clean technique, the sheer strength. He's an amazing grappler, man. He takes guys down with ease. That slam that he landed on Hubbard was a thing of beauty. That easy takedown that he got over Bilawado was great. O'Madson's a problem. He kind of reminds me of Ben Askren, man. Probably a slightly better striker, but he's a guy where 
it's like, I know exactly what I'm getting into. This guy's just got great grappling. If I can keep him at distance, I'll likely win this fight. If I can defend the takedowns, I'll likely win this fight. Like, he doesn't have good striking. Like, we're on the other hand, absolute veteran. I guess you can call him well-rounded, super sporadic. Not really talented anywhere. Like, there's not something where it's like, oh, this is Clay's thing. He's fucking great at this. Not really, man. He has a little bit of everything, and he's got a lot of heart. That's probably his best attribute. A lot of heart and willingness to fight. Better grappler than he is a striker. You know, his striking is very sporadic. Throws hooks, ducks down. Very vulnerable to knees. Anything coming up, like uppercuts, beautiful. Finish by Ortega against Guida. He's vulnerable to those type of attacks, but Marco Madsen just doesn't have that skill set. I don't see him throwing uppercuts. I don't see him throwing knees. Guida generally wins fights by grappling, taking guys down and controlling them, but he's not going to have that against a Manson. I highly doubt he can out-wrestle a Manson, man. A Manson's going to welcome that. He's going to fucking take down Guida with ease. Clay will have the advantage on the feet. There's no doubt about it. He's more diverse. He's more confident in his strikes. His boxing is a little wild, and wildness is hard to measure. It's hard to gauge. I mean, that's why he was able to land against Michael Johnson. Guida's boxing is going to be a problem, simply because a Manson doesn't have any head movement. Now, every time Clay Guida comes crashing forward, I see Mark closing the distance and jumping into that clinch, you know, getting the underhooks, the body lock. I mean, taking him down, just lateral throwing him, sweeping him, tripping him. Put a masterclass on Guida in the grappling department. Now, if Guida comes out here and surprises everyone, just defends all the takedowns, he wins this fight. I genuinely believe if both of them are upright for three rounds, Guida will easily outstrike Omanson. But Omanson, his wrestling is just too dominant. And being in the smaller apex cage, it's going to favor him, man. Less room for him to have to cut off the cage. It's going to be easier for him to corner off Guida. And every single time Guida hurts him, he's just going to double leg him, take him down, man. Guida doesn't have one punch knockout power. Omanson's management chose him. They're like, fuck, this guy's not that dangerous on the feet. Even if you get buzzed, you can just take him down and control him. I got a Manson winning by three rounds, unanimous decision. Take him down over and over and over and just control him. Not do too much ground and pound. I think Guida's got enough defense off his back to not get hurt. But just the control, the sheer control is going to be too much. And a Manson's going to cruise to a lay and pray decision. Moving on to the main event. We got Jared Cannonier versus Kelvin Gastelum. Great fight, appropriate fight. Both guys coming off losses um, against Robert Whitaker. They both got outstriked hard. You know, Whitaker was just a little too smart with the feints and the grappling. Mix it up a lot better than both gentlemen. Cannonier, he's an extremely powerful guy. Excellent leg kicks. That's probably his, his best weapon. He's just so fucking powerful with those leg kicks. On either stance, you know, he can fight southpaw all orthodox and he can throw it very well. Good straight right, excellent with his hooks. Just a super strong, dense, powerful guy on the feet. On the ground, not so much. Not not a great grappler. Not talented enough to be offensive on the ground, you know. He, he's got good ground and pound, don't get me wrong. But as far as hunting submissions and passing guard, that's just not what he does. Calvin Gastelum, on the other hand, he's a solid wrestler. Put on a wrestling clinic recently against Ian Heinish. Just reminded everyone, like, look, I'm not just a South Pole striker, man. He's known for his left hand. He's got a beautiful straight left. Very powerful guy. Short, sturdy, even shorter than Gannonier. Both guys are very short for the division, and Gesslem's one of the shortest guys, but he's super dense. When you look at the guys in the UFC with the best chins, generally they're short for the division. You know, look at Gastelum, Roy Nelson. Only guys like Holloway, I guess. Holloway, Adesanya are allies where they're tall and thin, but they still have great chins. Generally, guys with really good chins are shorter because they have more flesh to them. And that's Kelvin, 100%. Kelvin got fucking rocked so many times against Adesanya, against Whitaker. And he's never lost by knockout. He's just so fucking sturdy, that Mexican chin, man. Built like a fucking fridge. I don't know what, whether he's eating tacos, empanadas, or something's keeping him up, mate. He's so strong, so durable. He's been submitted 100%, but he's never been knocked out. And I don't see Cannonier submitting him. Stylistically, the way I see this fight going, I think Cannonier is definitely the more stronger physical guy. His shots are more powerful and will have more of an effect on Gastelum. Kicks are going to be a problem. Now Gastelum, he's going to look for that left hand all day. He's going to vary it up, but I want to see him wrestle a little more. And if he grapples more, I believe he has a very good path to victory against Cannonier. Better conditioning. He's had more experience in championship fights. Five round decisions he's been to. And he's a younger guy. We haven't seen Jared Cannonier in the fourth and fifth round. Does he have the gas tank? I don't know. And I believe it's within Gastelum's best interest to take him there. Jared is explosive, 100%. But if you can survive the first two rounds, man, like he gets a less and less effective. You saw that against Whitaker, man. That third round, Kennedy was fucked. He didn't have an answer. You know, credit to Whitaker for being so elusive and um, just amazing with his feints. But Kananir, man, he's just nowhere near as explosive in the third as he is in the first and the second. And obviously, you said that the same with every other fighter, but Kelvin Gastelum, he's not a fast twitch guy like Kennedy. You know, he's more of a, a guy who can go the distance. He's a guy who can throw a lot of combinations and not get tight. This is going to be a fight where it's going to go down to the wire. You know, fourth and fifth round, who wants it more? Who has more left? And I believe Kelvin's durability is going to carry him over. You know, do I believe Kennedy has the better power? 100%. Could he be the first guy ever to knock out Kelvin Gessler? Maybe, man. He's he's a fucking freak. But Kelvin's just so tough, man. Even when he gets hit, he kind of rolls with it, half blocks it. Like, he knows, man. Kelvin's very 
away and it's very durable. I think this goes the distance, man, and I favor Gastelum. I think he's going to mix up his grappling. And I think even in the boxing department, Kennedy might have the advantage at first. He's got good timing and patience, but Gastelum's just going to pick it up, man. He's going to push the pace. He's going to start landing combinations, and Kennedy is going to start shelling up. And as the rounds go by, Kennedy's outputs keep decreasing, and Gastelum's keeps increasing. Every time he gets hurt, he's going to grapple. And I don't think it's going to be that difficult for him to take down Cannon here. So I got Gasolin winning by you down his decision. I chose a shit ton of decisions for this card, man. But I just don't see a lot of finishes for this main card. But going into the betting tips. I'm liking Pantoja. I think his style is just a nightmare for Roy Var, man. Just a physically strong guy who won't fall for those tricks. Those random spinning elbows and stuff. He might, you might land it, but he's so fucking durable. He's going to walk forward. The strength that Pantoja has, coupled with his technique, is going to nullify Roy Val, Whatever he throws off his back. I just think Pantoja is going to be a nightmare matchup for Roy Val, man. And I see him just bulldogging him. Just being the more aggressive guy and just walking forward a uh, three round to zero unanimous decision so i like that punt i like marco medicine straight as well the book is not entirely sure of Amanda's striking and that's understandable because if Clay can keep it standing he'll fuck Amanda up man I like this fight for Amanda because Clay's not a finisher he's just not I don't see him submitting a guy like Amanda a guy who's so aware on the ground a guy who's so dominant on top with control nullifying ability I see Clay trying to knock him out and that is a path to victory, but he hasn't had a knockout in fucking years, man. Clay's just not a finisher on the feet. He's just not a finisher in general, period. So I think Edmonton stylistically is going to out-wrestle him for all three rounds. And those are some juicy odds, so I like that. And I also like this fight going the distance. Those odds aren't out yet, but if they're good, that's fun as well. Um, I appreciate you guys. Follow my Twitter. It's locked down for us in Victoria, so I should have got this video out a little earlier, but I was waiting for... Uh, the main card announcement i wasn't sure what was going to be in the main card man so yeah i'm keen for the ufc man there's a lot of great matchups coming up enjoy and uh, i'll see you next time